This Thursday from 7 o'clock, the True Geordie Free to Play Poker Tournament is back on GG Poker. There is a thousand tournament dollars on the line and a hundred dollar bounty on my head, which is yours if you can knock me out. And it's free to play. All you have to do to get involved is click the link in the description below, download and install the GG Poker app, create your account, go to tournaments, search True Geordie and hit register. And don't forget, whatever cash you deposit in your account, GG will match it up to six hundred dollars. So I'll see you this Thursday, seven o'clock. Don't be late. It's the True Geordie free roll only on GG Poker. Welcome back to the Pain Game YouTube channel. Today we're talking the heavyweight title picture in the UFC. But first, I want to let you know that we will be building out the Pain Game channel into its own brand, the same way we did with the kickoff. And I want you to list your favorite content creators, boxing and MMA, that you'd like to see on the roundtable debate shows on the Pain Game. But now we've got to look at Johnny Bones Jones, because he has been tweeting out the day that since have been deleted, that, oh, people always say that this new guy is going to be the one to dethrone me but look at the light heavyweight title era look at what i did none of them could dethrone me none of them will i'm always going to be undefeated he seemed a bit riled up by the notion that tom aspinall or anyone else is the guy to dethrone him and if anything it made him look a bit bothered which is probably why he deleted those tweets he was spinning a narrative of i always come out on top not i don't even need to answer these questions i'm always the guy who wins and look the reason the reason I find this interesting is because he has allegedly been planning on retiring after beating Steep Miocic. He wants to close the chapter, won my heavyweight title fight, I'm the greatest. He doesn't want questions being left. He doesn't want people saying, ah, but you never beat these two. And right now, he is being put under pressure to fight the young hungry lion in Tom Aspinall. And I don't know if that was part of the plan. And I also don't know if he likes what he sees in Tom Aspinall. Now, I'm not suggesting for one second Johnny Bones Jones is scared of anyone. But let's look a bit deeper into how he's handled his career. Because a lot of people would have you believe that because Johnny Bones Jones was an incredible light heavyweight and has won a, a fight at heavyweight, that therefore his heavyweight title reign is just going to be the same. He's just going to beat everyone in his past and he's the greatest and in fact he's so great he doesn't even need to fight the contenders because we all know how it would go and this is the sort of delusional fight fan shite that does my head in because it's the same logic that allows people like Tyson Fury to avoid Alexander Usyk because I oh, beat him anyway what's the point in saying that fight as if Upsets have never happened in heavyweight fights before. What a load of rubbish. What John Jones did at light heavyweight was unbelievable. But this is a new division with different problems and problems we've never seen Jones have to face before. So if you want to be the GOAT undisputed at heavyweight, that's a separate thing to light heavyweight. And you have to then have a separate title reign to prove that you are that guy. Beating Cyril gone who is stylistically the easiest matchup you can find for John Jones in the heavyweight division at that level, does not prove he beats everyone in that division. Now, don't get me wrong. I think John Jones is arguably the greatest fighter of all time, but people leave out context in his legacy. Now, for a start, there's the multiple failed drug tests and, you know, issues with PEDs. Now, I'm not going to go into that, but that's a factor. Then you look at the fact that John Jones is one of the biggest heavyweights now in the world. 260 pound monster biggest wingspan in the history of the UFC and realize that a lot of the best guys he fought at light heavyweight were actually middleweights predominantly. Leo Machida, middleweight. Rashad Evans, middleweight. Vitor Belfort, middleweight. Chael Sonnen, middleweight. They were some of his best wins. So he had a massive size advantage over a lot of guys at light heavyweight. That is important because he does not have that at heavyweight. Heavyweight is where we should get the true answer of what your skill set really is. And when you look at some of the fights he struggled in, Alexander Gustafsson, a big guy. Close fight with Daniel Cormier was also a heavyweight. A heavyweight he didn't want to fight at heavyweight because he was far more powerful Cormier me at heavyweight with his hands, so he made him fight at light heavyweight. Ovin St. Proof, big guy. Dominic Reyes, big guy. A big guy who I think he probably lost three out of the five rounds to. So yes, he's beaten Cyril Gorn, who has zero wrestling, who was out-wrestled by Ngannou, who isn't even a wrestler. And when you look at the fights that he struggled in a bit, it's when he's been more evenly matched size-wise at light heavyweight, and a lot of his most dominant wins were against middleweights. I'm not saying he's not the greatest of all time, I'm just speaking 
context and the truth around his career. Does it mean he wasn't amazing? No. He made the weight limit. He outclassed people. He is an all-time legend. But if you want to go down as the undisputed go at heavyweight as well, you're going to have to do a lot more than beat Cyril Gorn, who and Gorn who already beat. And the next fight apparently is Stipe Miocic, who has been finished for a few years now, if we're being honest. He isn't the fighter he was. And was also smashed by Ngannou. Jones is trying to paint the narrative of, oh, it's always the same way. Now, before we even look at the current heavyweight contenders, let's not forget, John Jones was talking about fighting a heavyweight for years and didn't do it because he was having it easy against these small light heavyweights. Then when he finally wanted to move up, I'm going to need all this time to put on weight. He took three years to have a heavyweight fight, which he could have done within one year because he was 260 one year into this weight gain idea. He was the one who delayed and delayed and delayed till Francis was out the fucking door. He could have fought Francis a long time ago. If he'd just taken the chance of going up the heavyweight earlier, we could have had him versus is a prime Cain Velasquez. Cain Velasquez was 240? John Jones is 260, 265? And you're telling me Cain Velasquez was too big for him? What a load of shit. Stipe Miocic could have fought him in his prime, another one who was no bigger than John Jones. So when he's giving it the big and being like, oh, well, people always think someone's going to come and dethrone me. And yeah, I get the narrative. That was the way it, like heavyweight. There was always that next guy coming up. But you ain't never for an animal like Tom Aspinall, who is as quick on his feet, who has the speed that he does at 260 pounds, who has the heavy hands that he does. You have never been in there with a beast like that. It's just not happened. I'm not saying that means Aspinall wins, but for people to do the Tyson Fury thing of going, oh, well, he's always won, so therefore he always will win. Why bother with the Usyk fight? Upsets happen, man. Sometimes someone isn't as good as you think they are, and someone's better than they think they are. You don't just get, because you've won these previous fights a light heavyweight to walk off and retire after Miocic fight and act like you're the greatest heavyweight of all time without fighting some of these serious contenders who are in their prime now. For a start, there's Sergei Pavlovich who put a hurting on Curtis Blades and has, has some serious, serious heavyweight power. This is something I want to see Jones deal with. And don't get me wrong, he may deal with it easy and if he does, then we've got our answer. But we need to see it. Look at that, man. Curtis Blades is no mug, and he just put him away. You look at the footwork of Tom Aspinall, how he never stands still. This will make him a lot harder to take down than a lot of fighters. He's hard to hit, and most importantly, when he hits, he hits quick and hard. We've never seen... A, a, a striker who was this light on his feet at heavyweight, arguably, who has the power of Aspinall. Like, Ngannou was more powerful, but he's a lot more flat-footed. He's not anywhere near as tricky as Aspinall would be. Boom. Elbow. Another one straight shot to the head, dropped him, and you are done and dusted. We've never seen John Jones in there with an athlete like Tom Aspinall. We just haven't. You know, even if you compare Tom Aspinall's striking in terms of speed and power to the greats in the UFC, I mean, let, let's look at the heavyweight champions. Frank Mir, Brock Lesnar, couldn't box like Aspinall. Cain Velasquez was a good boxer, but not a hard hitter. Junior Dos Santos, solid boxer, but not got the power, in my opinion, of Aspinall. The Dooms, nowhere near Aspinall striking. Stipe, nowhere near the power. Daniel Cormier, yeah, solid, but but not like Aspinall. So for me, Tom Aspinall, he might not have the power of Ngannou, but he's not far behind, and his speed and footwork make him potentially an even harder fight for John Jones stylistically. The thing I'll give Ngannou is his wrestling is strong, and that could have helped him keep it on the feet. And John Jones Jones's punching has never been his thing. Yeah, his kicks, his knees, his elbows, and then his wrestling and, and jiu-jitsu, his all-round game is a strength. His ring IQ is a strength. But punching is not that. His defensive boxing, I've always rated. I think he's good at covering up. But at heavyweight, you can't rely on that the same way because it just takes one shot from a puncher like Aspinall. The allowance for damage that he could take at light heavyweight is just not the same at heavyweight. It's so much easier to be defeated. And when you look at the fact that John Jones had one fight in three years and, and that lasted two minutes, yes, he looked great in that fight, but really wasn't tested. There is so many questions unanswered and I just don't want to see this guy walk off into the sunset and claim he's the greatest heavyweight ever after beating two guys who've already been defeated by the last champion. You haven't proven anything more than Ngannou. And in fact, let's be real, Tom Aspinall, 
Francis Ngannou and many other heavyweights on, on the heavyweight ranking list have got a lot more heavyweight wins than John Jones. This is a fresh division. You can't just piggyback off of your like, heavyweight career and act like you've got no questions to answer. You do. And look, I'm not saying Tom Aspinall beats John Jones automatically, but if the John Jones that showed up against Dominic Reyes turns up or Thiago Santos or Anthony Smith turns up, which were his last three fights before the move to heavyweight, Aspinall doesn't just beat that version of John Jones. He destroys him. This has to be absolutely on point. John Jones, no mistakes made. You've got to control the fight. You've got to dominate the fight because it doesn't take much from Aspinall. He has killer hands. This is a thing that Jones has never had to deal with before on the same size and strength level. So for those saying John Jones would wipe the floor with him, we don't even need to say that. Let me pitch this idea to you. Wembley Stadium. Tom Aspinall walking out full of British flags going crazy. This is our chance for the Englishman to come in and take down the greatest of all time in front of a sellout packed Wembley Stadium. It would be unbelievable. I don't know, man. I just think that that would make for one hell of an event. And uh, you just can't walk away after beating old man Sleepy. The guy's a part-time fireman. You're telling me he's going to be bringing as many problems to the table as a fresh, primed Tom Aspinall. It ain't happening, man. And you look at how quickly Tom Aspinall has been able to beat people. He is a threat. And for the US, USC's marketing point of view, because he's such a, 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 a nice guy and a good speaker, we could see him on breakfast TV shows. We could see him breaking through the barrier of cage fighters and making the UFC again in Britain more mainstream. So for me, if the UFC failed to make this matchup, it's a damning indictment on the situation in the UFC where consistently they fail to do what's best for business. And now they just rely on having a million different events a year full of fighters that most people don't really give a toss about. This is your chance to make a star. If Aspinall is good enough to beat Jones, this is the chance that UFC have to make a new star. Don't fuck it up, Dana. That's all I'm saying. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Am I off with this one? Is John's completely unbothered? And what his tweets are merely just to put Aspinall in his place. And maybe John Jones just walks through Tom Aspinall. Maybe I'm completely wrong. Let us know in the comments. And I'll see you on the next one. Like the video, subscribe to the Pain Game YouTube channel. Thanks a lot. And I'll catch you later.